Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Judge Ashley Wilcott, honored to be with you for the next three hours. We have breaking news out of Alabama. The woman who faked her own abduction is back in court today for a plea hearing. Carly Russell disappeared for two days last summer after reporting she saw a toddler on the side of the road. But once she turned up, it quickly became clear that the entire ordeal was a hoax. Let's get you into court now for the start of that plea hearing. Hey, Russell, come on to the podium with your lawyers. Judge, this is Miss Russell. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You are Carlethia Russell? Yes, sir. You can put your hand down. This is CC 23888 and 889. You were charged in each of these cases with making a false police report, which are misdemeanor offenses. I'm showing you a document titled Explanation of Rights. Did you go over this document with your lawyers? Yes, sir. Is that your signature on the last page? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about this document or about your rights? Yes, sir. All right then, and uh, there is no plea agreement here. You understand that? Yes, sir. In CC 23888, that's the misdemeanor offense of making a false police report, how do you plead? Guilty. And in CC 23889, as to the misdemeanor offense of making a false police report, how do you plead? Guilty. I, I, do you have, uh, let's see, I'm a little out of order here. I'm showing you. Courts Exhibit B, did you go over this document with your lawyer? Yes, sir. And is that your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied that your attorneys, Mr. Emory Anthony, Richard Jaffe, and Lucky Millard, yes, sir. are good and competent attorneys and have represented you well? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with the plea agreements in these cases? Yes, sir. Are you pleading guilty of your own free will? Yes, sir. Has anyone forced you or coerced you to plead guilty? No, sir. Has anybody promised you anything in exchange for your plea? No, sir. Are you pleading guilty because you are, in fact, guilty? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, before we proceed, um, well, I find that your plea was made knowingly and voluntarily, and based on your plea, I find you guilty. Uh, before sentencing, first, is there anything uh, that the Attorney General's office would like to add? Yes, Your Honor, if you don't mind. Um, as the court is aware, um, I have asked for, to speak today, and I have a lot to say, but the court has asked me to limit it to two minutes, and so I will do that. First of all, this case has always been about respect for law enforcement and respect for this community as a whole. Ms. Russell faked the kidnapping, duped the community, and contrived this situation. We still, Judge, don't know to this day where she was, how she got there, what she was doing, and with whom she was doing it with. She, um, we, once we figured out that she was supposedly missing, the community got involved. Hundreds of people got involved. They took time away from their families, their work, their, their fun. Law enforcement got involved from federal, state to local. And they took time away from their family, their people, their work, other cases that needed to be solved. This has been a case that it was taken advantage of and it's our contention that Ms. Russell knew this would happen. She had researched it on the computer. She had researched search terms about Amber Alerts and the uh, movie Taken, all of those things. And then, Judge, when she came home, we have rain camera footage of her walking casually down her parents' street, and when she gets in front of her parents' house, she runs up there and starts beating on the door. Police were called. The body cams show that she's flailing around and still perpetuating this ruse that she was kidnapped. The ambulance was called. She goes to the hospital and she finally speaks with law enforcement and that's when she tells the story about that orange-haired man and woman tell, playing with her hair and eating cheeses. This ruse continues and it doesn't stop until a couple of days later when her lawyer issues a statement. So I have to say, Judge, that because of this ongoing complete disrespect for this community as well as law enforcement. It is our contention that she should get some jail time. I understand that it's a misdemeanor. I do. 
But because of the effect that it has had on law enforcement as well as on the community, we feel even if it's weekends in jail or nights in jail, that some sort of incarceration is warranted in this case. I think I kept it under two minutes. All right, thank you, Ms. Morris. All right, is there anything from the uh, defense attorneys? No, sir. Judge, what we're going to do is let Ms. Russell make yes. a statement. Okay, Ms. Russell, before uh, being sentenced, you do have a right to make a statement. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I want to genuinely apologize for my actions and the resulting negative impact infl inflicted onto others. I made a grave mistake while trying to fight through various emotional issues and stress. I am extremely remorseful for the panic, fear, and various range of negative emotions that were experienced across the nation. I want you to specifically acknowledge and take accountability for the pain and embarrassment that I inflicted upon my family, my church family, friends, neighbors, community, and all of those who were directly involved in search efforts for me. I also extend my sincerest apologies to the Hoover Police Department and every other law enforcement agency and personnel for the position that I put them in and for the resources used. I absolutely regret my decision and in hindsight wish that I had cried for help in a totally different manner. My prayer is that I will be extended grace and given the opportunity to redeem who I truly am and restore the positively esteemed character that I have worked so hard to attain for the 25 years of my life prior to this incident. I wholeheartedly can say that I never had any malicious intent to hurt anyone. And I pray that you will feel my sincerity and that as I prepare to pick up the pieces and go on to restore my life, that you will witness the fruition of grace. And we're not gonna say anything here. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Um, you, when you first made this report, you know, you alarmed the community, this community, and uh, you really alarmed the country because the story went nationwide, as you know. Yes, sir. And then when it came out that it wasn't true, uh, not only was this community outraged, but the country was outraged. Um, what you did was you, you wasted a lot of government resources. And, and you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay uh, every dime of that in restitution in this case. Um, it would be a waste of government resources to have a trial in this case. So you have taken responsibility and we're not going to do that. It would be a waste of government resources to put you in jail. Uh, one of the most expensive things the government does is incarcerate people. And uh, we need to reserve our jails for people who are genuinely a, a threat to the community. Um, and. Um, Although we're very upset about what you've done, you're not a threat to the community. I'm not going to treat you any differently than I would treat any other first-time nonviolent misdemeanor offender. Accordingly, uh, it is the judgment and sentence of this court uh, that you're sentenced in each of these cases to six months in the county jail. Uh, these sentences are consecutive with each other, and these sentences are suspended. You're placed on rest. Uh, you're placed on probation for 12 months, supervised probation. It's a condition of your probation that you pay a full amount of restitution, which is $17,974.88, paid to the city of Hoover, 100 Municipal Lane, Hoover, Alabama, 35216, paid up through the clerk's office on the first floor in this building, so we have a record of it. I'm also sentencing you to serve, and this is a condition of your probation, 100 hours of community service. Um, I want to see, when we come back, I want to see that you've made progress, if, if not have completed that community service. Um, I understand that you're currently getting mental health counseling, is that right? Yes, sir. It is a condition at this point of your probation that you continue getting mental health counseling, and I'd like to see some proof that you're getting that counseling when we come back. This case is set for a review hearing. We'll, uh, we're going to review the amount of restitution that's been paid, community service, um, and that date is October 16 at 9 a.m. Anything else for the state or the defense? Yes. Not the yes. Department of Defense. There you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Thank you.
She took responsibility and pled guilty, and the judge said that did save money. We don't have to go to trial. But on the other hand, you've wasted money and gave her the same sentence he would as any other first offender, non-violent misdemeanor case. When we come back, you don't want to miss it. We're going to have post-hearing reaction from Russell's team and from the police chief. Stay tuned. Tonight on Closing Arguments, the case against Chad Daybell. Our experts break down how this trial might play out as both sides continue to prepare. Closing Arguments, tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. Ion kicks off the National Women's Soccer League, airing all season long. She scores! She's on fire! See the full schedule and find where to watch at IonNWSL.com. We are in Alabama this afternoon where a woman accused of falsely telling police she had been abducted has just pled guilty. Carly Russell called 911 on July 13th to report a toddler on the side of the highway and then she vanished without a trace. That is until two days later when she showed up at her parents' house with a wild story that she had been abducted and then she escaped. Russell later confessed to lying about her abduction and has now pleaded guilty to those charges. The judge also issued a sentence. We want to go back right now though before we talk about that where Russell's team is reacting to the guilty plea. And but we good. want you to hear yeah, I know you do. But, but I want to say this. I, I think it's very important that we understand what transpired. And I want to commend uh, Judge Carpenter for being strong enough to make a decision based upon probation. Uh, as I stated to you when we were at uh, the city of Hoover, I've never seen anyone incarcerated for two years for a misdemeanor. Uh, no matter what, domestic violence, third degree, or whatever, no one has ever been incarcerated. So first of all, we want to thank Judge Carpenter for I doing agree. what we think right. all judges should do with a class A misdemeanor, first offense. Uh, Carly apologized to the community, uh, to Hoover, to the volunteers for her action. And I hope that we will accept that and move on and uh, allow her to live her life. I know there's still questions that you all want her to answer, but I think it will be good to give her the opportunity uh, to find herself if you allow me to use that term. All right? You wouldn't say where she was at. Can you say why this all transpired? Well, it was, it was an emotional type situation. She stated that when she made her statement. Yeah, I'm going to add to that that clearly she is in counseling. And that ought to tell you something. And like she said, she just overreacted. And uh, it was an emotional decision. She's just 26 years old. She's in nursing school. She's got three semesters left. She's genuinely and remorseful, and she's been deeply affected, and she wants to, as she said, redeem herself, and she has apologized to the community, and it's probably going to end up being something that she can build on and, and as Mr. Anthony said, make something really powerfully good about her life and teach others. I think, I think she made a great statement, and I think it was concise, and I think she took responsibilities for her action, availing herself to the court today, and I think, you know, we should all be able to move on. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully, Hopefully move on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There you go. I want to highlight one of the things the judge said. Again, he commented that he's doing the same that he would do for any first offender, nonviolent misdemeanor guilty. And here's what she received. Six months in jail suspended. So that means she has 12 months of supervised probation. He also included the restitution because of the money it cost the city. $17,974.88 she'll have to pay back to the city over time. 100 hours of community service and probably most important, he did include that she must continue her mental health counseling. I really think a very sound sentence by the judge. Let's go back now, though. We want to get reaction from the police chief. What's your takeaway from this? I know that there was a strong push for some jail time. In uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm very disappointed in the, uh, in the decision not to give any jail time. 
um, you know, she gave an apology today, and uh, unfortunately, to, to me, it's like seven, eight months uh, late. Uh, I don't know why we didn't hear that uh, back in July. And um, it's just unfortunate. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of people, uh, I mean, the judge commented, not only uh, in, in our community, but across the nation, that were real concerned for, for those uh, couple of days. Uh, the 17800 whatever their restitution, is not really uh, close to really what the restitution should be. And uh, bottom line, uh, there should be uh, consequences for your actions. Uh, it appears to me here the consequences are for the parents, because uh, I would assume that they're the ones that are going to have to pay for this. But, uh, you know, the judge has spoken. I do want to thank the legislature. Uh, you know, the last press conference I gave, I talked about that this should be a felony. And uh, I think we're uh, headed that, uh, that direction. So hopefully if anybody uh, uh, does anything like this again, then they'll be uh, prosecuted in a different manner. But uh, again, uh, we can leave here. Uh, happy that it's over. Disappointed that, uh, that there will be no, uh, no jail time whatsoever. Could you give us a better figure as far as a ballpark amount? The, uh, the the real figure should probably be in the 40s, uh, 40s, at least 40 to 50 thousand dollars for all the money that we spent. How do you feel that we still don't know why? Yeah, I mean, that's the deal. You know, we, we uh, as as uh, as the the state said, uh, we still today still don't know where she was during that period of time. Obviously, probably had help. We don't know who the help was. And uh, again, it, it, to me, it's a little slap on the wrist. Uh, Pay, pay your money and, uh, and and go forward. And I just think, because I'm just a little little disappointed in all that. I'd have felt better if they didn't want to give any jail time. Let's at least discuss where you were and, and, and find out what the circumstances uh, were. I mean, we talk about everybody's got mental illness today. And, and uh, you know, if she's got uh, issues, uh, please get the help uh, that she needs. And hopefully she'll lead a, a good uh, good life from here on. When you were listening to her apology, did you feel that in your heart it was sincere? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think she's apologized, and I, I think she obviously went through a lot uh, from, uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of people upset, and uh, I think uh, she and her family heard that after the, the fact that when, when she returned home. But again, I'd have felt better about an apology back in July, not in, uh, what are we, March, uh, almost April. I would have felt a lot better here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. Why was it important that you all asked for a custodial sentence for Carly today? We've always said we thought this should carry some prison um, sentence. Um, we knew that that was probably unlikely. It's a misdemeanor. We knew that coming in. Uh, I think we all learned something new, that our law was really weak when it came to false reporting to police. That's why the legislature is one step away from getting a bill to the governor's desk that we helped author that would make this a felony in the future. That bill would also extensively expand the available restitution we could seek, which as you heard the chief, what she's going to pay is not nearly the real cost involved. And I think that if this ever happens again, which hopefully it won't, um, there won't be that loophole there. Was there a reason why we came in with no plea agreement? Um, it's just how it happened. Yeah, it's just how it happened. Is the grand jury still impaneled or can you say? Uh, this case is closed as of today. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. Can you say and spell your name? Katherine Robertson, K-A-T-H-E-R. All right, let me bring in trial attorney Trey Gober. And I have to ask you this, Trey. I was a little surprised at the strength of the response from law enforcement, the police chief, as well as from the prosecutor saying, we wanted jail time in this case. But on the other hand, you recognize the amount of time and heartache and resources because she falsely reported this crime. Which side do you fall on? Thankfully, there's no jail time, like the defense said, or there should have been jail time, like the prosecution said. treat this person like we would any other defendant. So the judge laid out and very well articulated uh, the logic behind uh, his sentence. And just because a case gets picked up and has national attention, the defendant doesn't necessarily control that aspect of the case. And so treat this defendant like you would any other defendant, nonviolent, first time misdemeanor, where she's accepting responsibility. And I think the judge did the right thing in sentencing without jail time in this particular case. Yeah, I think he has to hold it the same as any other person in that similar situation. But I have to suggest this. The state mentioned both during court, before the sentencing, as well as the presser we were just watching, that they were a little frustrated, that they didn't know where she was for those two days, what she was doing. Could they not have reached a plea agreement that required her to have said more about where she was and what she was doing? 
Absolutely, that could have been a requirement. I don't know that it was all that relevant to the question. It's not one of the elements of the charge, certainly, to know why it is that she made a false report to the police. She wasn't making an affirmative defense of, of duress or that she was at least temporarily incompetent or insane. So I, I think to a certain extent there's this curiosity that the public has, that the police have, but I don't know that why she was or where she was at the time of the alleged kidnapping, the alleged kidnapping really should make that much of a difference. Well, that's a really good point that it doesn't go to the elements. Now we know and we did hear her in court say that she apologized, that she had made a grave mistake due to emotional issues and distress. She's getting mental health counseling. She'll be ordered to continue to do that, that she regrets her decision and that she prays she be granted grace. I would suggest no jail time is grace, but consistent with other offenders in that same circumstance. There's one other thing that I want to discuss with you, Trey, though, and they mentioned it, but I think that we have a full screen because Russell did some internet searches and the state brought this up. She did things like, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert search? How to take money from a register without being caught? The Birmingham bus station, a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham. The movie Taken, that one stood out to me. Amber Alert and maximum age for an alert. I mean, that sounds like uh, predetermined, doing some research, figuring out how to stage her disappearance. And do you think that was really considered or do you think once there's a guilty plea, that's it, and then the judge goes to sentencing? It's certainly part of it and something the judge can take into consideration. I. Uh, again, as the prosecution and the, the police chief pointed out, there seems to have been a loophole for this type of premeditated false reporting versus somebody who just false reports on the fly to the police. Uh, so I don't know that any of that should make a huge difference in this particular case. And in the grand scheme of things, of the types of cases that these prosecutors, that police chief and this judge see on a daily and weekly basis, we all know that it would be a waste of resources to continue to punish her just so that we can feel better yeah. about, about it. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Also joining us now, we have Philip Dubé, Deputy Public Defender. Thank you, Philip, for joining us. I want you to get uh, you to weigh in, please, and say how you feel about the fact that she did get supervised probation for 12 months, along with restitution, continued mental health counseling, community service. She did not get jail time as the state was requesting. Your thoughts? I think she got a screaming deal. And frankly, I think the deal was at the gate that this was filed as a misdemeanor. And in reaction to this case, Alabama is changing its laws. They are now going to make false reporting and false incident reporting a 10 year felony. So uh, it's caused a groundswell of reaction from the community there. And now there is going to be reform in this area of, of criminal law. The only thing I respectfully disagree with in this sentence, I take exception with the court ordering her to pay restitution. In essence, she is being asked to pay for the cost of her own prosecution. We don't see that very often. Sometimes we might see it with very specific statutory violations like weights and measures, you know, that kind of thing. But when you're arrested, apprehended, brought to court and prosecuted, you're never, ever asked to reimburse a government entity the cost of prosecution and search and rescue efforts. I've just never seen it. It's unusual. I think that community was a little outraged, the amount of money, yeah. time, concern that was spent when they then in retrospect realized she staged her own disappearance. Uh, another part of this I have to point out is that continued mental health counseling that I'm grateful. The court put in the court order to ensure that she can get whatever help she needs. All right, gentlemen, stay with us, please. Coming up, we're going to head back to New Hampshire for more testimony in the small town secrets murder trial. We'll be right back.